Hello, my name is Anton, and in this video, I'm going to go into the make.md plugin for Obsidian. All right, so I already have the plugin installed. It's already set up. We can come in here and see if you go into browse, just type in here make, and you will find this plugin fairly easy. Go ahead and install it, and once it's installed, you don't really have to configure anything, but I'll go through some of these um, settings in the options here um, that you can change and a couple that you might want to change and that I change. Let me go ahead and increase the zoom here so you can see this. And on the sides, on the side pane here, it might not look too much different than some of the other themes that you might see out there. But one of the things here is that you can change what they call stickers or these icons fairly easy by clicking on them and changing these icons of the folders to come back in here or house there this is a file if I click on this file I can see that icon here and I can change it here as well I can come in here and I can change the the um, the header border uh, banner for this file if I want to using local files or you can even use a URL. You can add tags um, to the file directly from here at the, in, in the metadata and you can also add additional metadata to this file just using some of the uh, quick buttons they have here at the top of the file. If you want to do some styling there is some styling here where they have this different um, uh, flow styler that comes with this plugin so you can easily either bold or tell size or do strike throughs if you don't want to mess with keyboard shortcuts and this is nice now looking at the side pane here this is by default what you're going to get when you set up and enable the make plugin this is where most of the functionality from make will you'll get out of it now here you can do spaces this space here is the default space and this space is one that's uh, sync to the vault itself so it will show the vault top level and then the entire folder tree underneath it items within here can be moved around so if you come in here and you want to grab say one one of the elements you can kind of move those around within the tree if you like so we'll go ahead and move those around if I want this to be ordered say in this particular folder, but I want it at the top of the folder, I can go ahead and change that. I can change this to where maybe that certain things will be in different sp spots within this particular view the way you want it. So you can go in, you can really customize the look and feel of this file explorer uh, for this space on this side here. If we come to the top here, we can see that there is a selection option here where you can, you can create new spaces, new smart spaces. Um, you can reload spaces, collapse spaces, expand them, uh, manage hidden files, get to the obsidian settings, and open other vaults. And you also have a quick link to the community page. You can create a new note from here. And you can open up this blink, which is a basically a pop-up for searching different files within your vault. And you can get a, a list of the most recent ones that you opened up. Now, if we come in here to the spaces and we let's do a new space, show you the different types of spaces that you can have in here. Now, if we do a test one, let's do a sync folder space here this is similar to the one we just saw but this one shows the entire vault if we come in here let's show you that we can actually go to subdirectories within the vault and also save those as space in the space and then you can get a much tighter view on what you might want to see within that space you still get the functionality where you can drag and drop things around as you like and you also still come in here and change the different icons let's go to an open up a new space again and let's do one that's not a synced 
uh, that does not sync to a folder. Let's play around with this one. So within this one here, we can see there's nothing. I had go ahead, went ahead and expanded it out. But if we come to these three dots or you can right click on this particular space and you can get this menu for a new note, a new canvas and a new folder. So if we come in here and we create a new folder, some text that shows up on the other side, we can come in here and we can rename. These here, we can change icons if we like. We can also come in here and add in a new folder. And as I mentioned before, you can still drag and drop things around as you like to in here. So all the different functionality is here, same as with the synced folder spaces, except you get to manually add the folders and files in here. Now, if we go to a smart, a smart space here, let's create a new one here. I'll create one for daily notes. And in here, you get the option to be able to uh, match a, a lot of different criteria based on some of these elements they have in here. And there are a lot of them, but I'm going to just use the tags um, feature here and only the ones with a tag of daily note. You can put multiple tags if you like. You can also add multiple criteria here that you might want to um, filter by so you can get more granular in what you want. I'll go ahead and save this space. And if we come into the space, we can see now there are all these files now that have the, the daily notes tag that we set up on the filter. So if I click on the space itself at the high level, we are in this particular view where we're showing a list of these files. We can change the view by clicking on this settings uh, icon here, and we can change that view to a table view. We can change it to a card view. And as we can also change it to a flow view, which will give you a flow of all the different files that are in there. And you can see the text. And if you scroll through, you can see all the text and you can actually come in here and you can modify this text as well as you go through it. Let's go ahead and change this back to that table view. And we're on the table view here and we can see these different columns where created date is one of the default ones that show here as well as the file. You can add additional properties here. And if I want to add say the extensions so I can see what the extensions are on these files. You can go into type here. There's a lot of different things that you can set here for types. And if we want to do the lookup for this one here, do a lookup, we can do a file extension. And then I can come in here and I can save this. I can see the file extension. There are a lot of different options that are in there where you can choose these different columns. And this gives you that data view type of uh, functionality for searching for files. Now, if you can come in here and you can do a group by, if I do a group by, I can group by the different properties that I set over here. So if I group by extension, we'll see there's really only one extension MD in here. But if I go ahead and group by, say create it, we can see that there's a bit of a grouping going on there. You can come in here and you can create a new filter um, and you can also clear any filters that you might have. So let me come in here and create a new filter. I will filter by, let's just say extension um, is not empty, right? So and then if I want to clear that filter, I can come in here and clear that filter. So you can see how powerful some of this stuff is. It's not just an aesthetic, you know, um, thing with make.com where all they do is kind of make everything look better. They also add some really cool functionality 
with these spaces when you add them in. I don't use as many of these spaces. Um, I'm keeping it simple right now, but you can again see the, the power of these spaces and what you can achieve by using them. Now let's quickly look at a couple of changes that I, I would make in the settings. One is the compact mode. So if we come back over here and we look at this here and we change this to compact mode, go back to that. We can see how it changes this here. It just basically squeezes everything down to its essentials and it makes the new note button a lot smaller into a little icon and also the blank but you still have all the same functionality. Another setting that I would do here is come all the way down to the bottom and for the flow styler on mobile this is, is, is really not great at all so I've disabled the flow styler on mobile. You can get way more functionality using the advanced mobile toolbar on mobile so I would recommend if you're going to use the make.md theme on mobile, then you uh, come into the, um, the actual settings for make.md all the way down at the bottom there again. And this will maybe turned on by default. I think it was. I would go ahead and disable this particular feature here. Everything else is really based on personal preference. So you can go through these other options and once you start playing around with this figure out what you want on what you want off and yeah make it fit to whatever your needs are you can from the appearance side just uh, hit these really quick so the sidebar tabs here at the top you can get rid of those within the view you can also get rid of this app ribbon if you don't like it to be there and as I mentioned you can change the side pane to be uh, compact or not. So I'm gonna wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.